Flair's custom technique for baseboard installation. Hey, get this cat out of here. Cat's in the way. Custom baseboard installation. Take one. Okay, so what I do is I set up kind of a crude diagram. You can see just here's the rim really out. Number your number one. And then you just measure. Okay. So then I'm gonna call this 48 and 3 sixteenths. So on my paper, I could draw a diagram, kind of a crude of how what how that's going to be cut. 48 and 3 sixteenths. Oh, so that's a wrong diagram. And you just kind of make a little uh, 45 emblem notation. This is two and a sixteenth. So number one. So this is going to be 45 this way with a 90, two and one sixteenth. Three and nine sixteenths. And you can lay, number these like that. Next one is fifteen and one half. So it's going to be forty five this day. 15 and 15 and one half. This one is square on either side. Seven and 15 sixteenths. So you would pretend that the baseboard isn't there, right? So kind of measure out to where the 45 is going to cut to. And it doesn't hurt to go a hair long, right? Because you can always trim off the square side or the 45. So I call this 6 and 9 sixteenths. Square on this side and then a 45 this way. And then as you go around the corner, you call this two and sixteenth. Two and a sixteenth. And then these diagrams are facing the molding so the the finish side is on the outside. And that's just how I do it. Make the cuts, put them into place. If they're a hair long, you just either trim it. If you have like a belt sander, you can trim it real quick or a Dremel tool is good for making some intricate cuts in the back. Say for instance, the wall bulges out or something, you can um, make those cuts. And if you have the uneven floor, the, the belt sander would be real good because you can kind of just quickly take down a sixteenth of an inch and uh, be good to go. So, that's all I got. Thanks.